1 Corinthians chapter 13. It talks about the definition of love. And I want us to look at it. It says, love is patient. So the ability to wait for something without getting upset. That's patience, right? So when you are going, you have a, you've, you've agreed to leave the house at a particular time. And your wife did picking one or two things. What's your reaction? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so what's your reaction if if she wastes time? Because love is what? So you don't even hurry out because patience, you won't hurry out. Because by hurrying out, there are some things will be boiling, right? As you are hurrying out, there are some other extra things that will be coming out. <laughs> if she wastes time, it's not, you know, it's not some people. No, we're talking about your wife. <laughs> yeah, Pika, right? Yeah. Hey, so, if she's major, if she's major in wasting time, then you will be PhD. You want to be, be John. Uh, <laughs> it says love is what? Patient. So love is kind. Now to treat your husband the very best that you can. That is kindness. To be kind to him. No matter what he just did, you still choose to be kind. He just said something that you are not okay with. And he needs your help. You still need, you still choose to be kind. So, acting kindly. Talk in a kind manner. When you focus your attention on those things, focusing your attention on those things that he does well. Love does not envy. Real men do not get intimidated by the success of their wives. Rather, they create more environment. They create the, the very good environment for her to thrive the more. Because they know that when she succeeds, he is also a success. Praise the Lord. And because behind every successful woman too is what? Is a more successful man. It says, Love does not brag. Good wives don't intimidate their husbands with their achievements too. Love does not brag. Love is not arrogant. It's not proud. Love is not rude. So many things we take, we tolerate in our place of work. But when we get home, we go, we don't even we cannot even tolerate it with our spouse. Love is not rude, it does not dishonor. Love is not self-seeking. Marriage is not satisfying yourself. So if you're entering marriage and you cannot do, you want to be married and you cannot do all this, but that you just, you know, just be on your own. So that you don't cause pain into the life of whosoever you want to get married to. Selfishness is not a word in the dictionary of marriage. It's not satisfying your own needs. It's not about fulfilling your own need. But fulfilling the need of your husband, fulfilling the need of your wife. Naturally, all of us are self-centered. We want things that satisfy us. But for us to have a great marriage, for you to have a great marriage, you must always seek the fulfillment of your spouse. Selfish acts in marriage everything must be all about your interest where to live you are the one that will decide it 
Vacation. You are the one that will decide it. That is selfishness. I heard of a story of a woman that anytime she tells her husband that they are going to have a vacation in a place, and the husband says no, there's no vacation that year. So if the husband does not agree with her own interest, then that thing is not done. That is not marriage. Love in marriage is not selfishness. If it is all about your comfort, without considering your spouse, then that is not love. Love is not getting everything you want, but is seeking the well-being of your spouse. Love is not easily angered. It's not irritable. Before you got married, nothing matters. Before you, when you are, when you are cutting, nothing matters, right? You don't see any fault in the person that you are about to get married to. You don't see any fault. But immediately you get married, you begin to see those little little things begins to become mountains. Love is not easily angered. When you love your husband, you don't get irritated. Any slightest mistake, you get irritated, no? When you love your wife, you don't get easily irritated. That is the definition of biblical love. Love keeps no record of wrong. Oh, your husband did something to you yesterday. You bring it to today. As a matter of fact, in um, next week you are still talking about it. Then you are still making reference to it. That was how you did. It's a natural thing for us, right? As human beings. But we need to consciously work on it. There was a time I, I, I told myself, I said, if now I cannot work on my marriage, for example, if every little thing I will have to be arguing with my husband on every little thing, then it will not change when we have 100 years. I could see old people that they are old, they, they will keep arguing. They can argue over water. It's because it's, they did find themselves, it, it, started, it started when they started their marriage. If you want your wife, your spouse, your husband to still love you, to still cherish you, to still have this relationship that is as if you just got married, you cannot overlook all those things. If you don't want it when your marriage is 30 years, you got to stop it now. Forgiving one another is a commitment that you must make as a wife. It's a commitment that you must make as a husband. We will not always do the right thing. For example, you could be disappointed by your husband. Maybe he said something you don't like. You could be disappointed by your wife. Maybe she behaves in a way that you don't like. But you must make a commitment to forgive. And for our singles in the house, the journey of love. Somebody comes to you, or a man comes to you and says, Okay, you are the one that God is leading me to. You decided to, okay, let me just pray about it. And you, you, you feel this conviction in your heart, you know, to, to, to be wedded with that person. Now, that period of courtship, it's the period to know yourself. It's a period to know yourself. And, and how do you know yourself? You must create time to communicate. You must create time to talk about 
what you like. What are the things you like? What are the things you don't like? This is what I like. These are the things I don't like. There must be communication. There must be agreement. You must have the same goal that you are pursuing. It's so important. The time of courtship is not the time to go from one eatery to another, from one restaurant. Those things are good. But communication is very, very, very important. In courtship, you must open your two eyes wide. Because it is in courtship that you will get to understand if truly this person is the right person for you. There are some issues that may come up. For example, a brother in the church may have an anger issue. And any slight mistake is beaten. If there is a mistake in courtship, there is going to be a mistake in marriage. If it is not worked on. If the person does not consciously work on himself. So it's a time to communicate. It's a time to pray together. It's a time to communicate. It's a time to pray together. The praying together is important. The praying together is important. Because in, there are some things that physically you may not understand. But while you pray together, the Lord will level every ground concerning your marriage and concerning your courtship. It's important that you do not allow any man to talk you. And it is important that you don't look at any woman's beauty or whatever that is physical. Because what you see today that is attracting you to that man, to that woman, may not be there tomorrow. And that's the truth about life. If you marry a woman because of beauty, when she starts having children, she may be more beautiful. Let me not say something else. I remember the teacher in my school, when she became pregnant, oh my God. When she became pregnant, she was, she was like this. And it was because she was pregnant. So imagine if a man, you marry a woman because she's black, she becomes pregnant and she down, some babies will carry all their mommy's beauty. They will just change the woman's look until she puts the best. So what happened? Their love will, love will pause. Suspended. It will be suspended. <laughs> the laughter. Praise the Lord. So it's important that you know why you are going in and you know the purpose why you are doing what you are doing. Marriage is a lifetime commitment. It is sweet, it is fulfilling, it is fantastic. You can use it with every vocabulary that you have. It is exciting, <laughs> yet marriage could be disastrous. Marriage could, could, marriage could stab a heart in a way that you cannot describe it. And that is why we must work and be sure that we are on the right track. Then, I also like to say this. Don't ever assume Your marriage will last. Don't. I mean, what I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not being negative. I'm just saying, don't ever look at people's marriage and say, oh, they are going through divorce. Oh, maybe they, they, are, they were wrong somewhere. Maybe they didn't love themselves. You can be genuine, genuine love going into marriage and you still end to be a failure. That's why we have to have this talk. 
Because getting married is the beginning of a journey without end. We have to keep working on ourselves. How do you speak to your wife? How does your wife respond to you? Does it make you happy as a man? Does it make you happy as a wife? But these things, they look simple, but they are very important. How many times did you, did you tell your spouse, I love you? You said that to me when you guys were cutting, right? You know, it's very, I remember when I was dating my husband, when we were cutting, I remember vividly in my father's house. I sat down on the couch and I was crying. Why? Because I missed him. <laughs> Miss the fine boy. <laughs> wow. Because I missed him. Right? <laughs> now, can you chop me now and I'll be crying? <laughs> I know my children will ask me, is everything okay? <laughs> so that is to tell you that the love, the chemistry you had when you were cutting, right? May not be what you will have in 20 years. When you walk at some aspect on the way, it will still be strong. Praise the Lord. So, how many times do you tell your spouse, I love you? How many times do you appreciate the little things that she does? Maybe she cooks, or you see that she's so tired and she but she still managed, you know, to go and cook for you. Do you show appreciation and say, oh, I know that you're tired. Or even standing up to go and do this cooking, I appreciate you more. They are, they are not mere words. Because what will make us and what will mouse? Out of this same mouth, we can build and we can make things collapse. Do we give our spouse undivided attention? So I'm not saying you are in the same room. Because you can be in the same house and just be roommates. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying being in the same house and you talk to each other. Not that the man is on phone or the woman is on phone or the man is watching TV while your spouse, spouse is asking for your attention. Spending time together. Those are the little, little things. Taking a walk together. Talk about the past. Talk about how you used to feel when you first met him. Or when he first met you. Or when you first met him. Whichever way. Those are the things that ignite relationship. It's so, so important. And I will end up here. Being sensitive to your wife's needs. Being sensitive to your husband is very, very important. Your husband doesn't feel happy, or you don't care, or you notice that your husband is not doing what he used to do. Ask questions. Encourage that man to be who God has made him to be. With the words of your mouth, with your word of affirmation, with your word of encouragement. Let that man know that he matters. It's important. Let that woman know that without him, without her rather, there will be no Adam. No complete Adam. I mean, Adam will be completely incompetent without Eve. Those things are important. No man can lay his life down for his wife without Christ in him. And no woman can submit to her husband in everything without God in her. 